<laughs> President Bush hosted Australian Prime Minister John Howard at his ranch in Crawford, Texas. Their remarks in a moment. After that, the weekly radio addresses and Fox News correspondent Carl Cameron, part of our Students and Leaders series. Now to Crawford. This news conference from earlier today is 20 minutes. Beautiful day. Morning. Our ranch, we, we love coming here. Friend, the Australian government has been a great friend of the American people. The Australian people are great friends as well. I, uh, the Prime Minister is a man of a courage. He is a clear thinker. He understands the responsibilities of freedom. America is really grateful uh, for the sacrifices of the Australian people and for the leadership of Prime Minister John Howard. On September the 10th, 2001, uh, Prime Minister Howard and I stood together at the Washington Naval Yard to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the ANZUS Treaty. The next day, Australia and America began writing a new chapter in the history of our alliance. On September the 14th, just three days after the terrorist attacks, Australia invoked the ANZUS Treaty's mutual defense provisions. Australia came to America's aid in our time of need. And we won't forget that. In nearly 20 months since September the 11th, Australian and American intelligence and law enforcement officials have worked very closely together. Our relationship has never been stronger. And that's good. Because together we've broken up terrorist cells, we've disrupted terrorist plots, we've cut off terrorist financing, we brought a lot of terrorists to justice. And in Iraq, Australian and American forces have stood together once again. We ended the rule of one of history's worst tyrants. And in so doing, we not only freed the American people, we made our own people more secure. By getting rid of Saddam Hussein, we ended the suffering of a lot of people in Iraq. And at the same time, we made peace more possible in the world. All Australians are justifiably proud of the superb performance, and I mean superb performance, of the Australian Air Force, Navy, and Special Forces in Operation Iraqi Freedom. As you may know, I was on the uh, USS Abraham Lincoln two days ago. I met with Admiral Kelly. He was our highest ranking official in charge of joint operations. I said, I'm getting ready to see the Prime Minister in Crawford. The Prime Minister showed he's not only a man of steel, he showed the world he's a man. We won't tire in our attempts to fight terror. Nothing will deter us. We understand the effects of terror. We also are committed to a world that is more peaceful and more free. We're committed to a stable and democratic Iraq. We fully believe the people of Iraq are capable of running their own country. We will work to provide the conditions necessary for security, repair the infrastructure, make sure that the uh, life of the average Iraqi citizen is back to normal, and then encourage the Iraqi people to decide their own fate and run their own government. We agree the UN Security Council should move swiftly to lift the economic sanctions on Iraq. We'll continue to work together to make the world more safe and free. Today, we've dis we discussed a lot of key issues. I was comfortable in so doing because I value the advice of John Howard. I trust his judgment, and I appreciate his friendship. Mr. Prime Minister. But can I, uh, Mr. President, congratulate you on the leadership that you gave to the world, uh, at times under very great criticism, uh, at times facing very great obstruction, 
but you had a resolute, clear view of what had to be done. And uh, we were very uh, pleased and very proud and very determined uh, when uh, the final decision was taken to be part of that. I think what was achieved in Iraq um, was quite extraordinary from a military point of view. Uh, I think the military textbooks will be replete with the experiences of Operation Iraqi Freedom uh, for many years to come and the leadership of the United States uh, with the support of its coalition partners, uh, Great Britain, Australia, Poland and others, uh, I think has sent a very important message not only to the region but also uh, to uh, the rest of the world. I welcome... Is there a possibility that you may never find weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and how would that square with your rationale for going to war? Yeah, questions about weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Uh, the uh, United States, United Nations Security Council voted uh, 1441, which made the declaration it had weapons of mass destruction. It's well known it had weapons of mass destruction. And uh, um, we also got to recognize that he spent 14 years hiding weapons of mass destruction. I mean, he spent an entire uh, decade making sure that inspectors would never find them. Iraq's the size of the state of California. It's got tunnels, caves, all kinds of complexes. We'll find them. And um, it's going to be a matter of time to do so. Yeah, the question is about, uh, uh, you know, we've captured 18 of the 55, I think you said. And um, we're still looking for Baghdad Bob, I want you to know. Well, anyway, uh, what are we learning? Well, we're learning that, uh, for example, that Tariq Aziz still doesn't know how to tell the truth. He didn't know how to tell the truth when he was in office. He doesn't know how to tell the truth when he's been uh, as a captive. And uh, the, but, but we will find out a lot about the nature of the uh, Hussein regime uh, as time goes on. Because, you know, it, 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 more and more people will come forward. It may not be the aces, kings, and queens, and jacks that do the talking. It may be those who were doing the, uh, carrying the water for the aces, kings, queens, and jacks that do the talking. And we will learn a lot when the Iraqi people, uh, as the Iraqi people continue to come forth. And when we feel like sharing the information with you, we will. Uh, it's, uh, you probably learn it before I will in certain cases. But we, what we're going to, the world will find is the man had a, uh, a program to develop weapons of mass destruction, that he had terrorist connections, and that he was by far one of the most brutal dictators in the history of the world. People in Australia and America can't imagine what, 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 when John and I say, how brutal this guy is. That, 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 that's, just, that, that's beyond the imagination of the of the Australian people to think that could possibly happen. It happened. And more and more people will find out the nature of this regime as time goes on. I don't know whether the aces will talk. I don't know whether the kings will talk. But many Iraqi citizens will talk. And the more we learn, the more the world will find out about the true nature of the Iraqi regime to make Australian people, and America for that matter, more secure. Um, we had a pretty good dinner last night, a little beef. And uh, fortunately, the prime minister wanted to go to bed early, because <laughs> I did too. And uh, we had a great visit. We'll go and have a lunch. I'm a, one more tour of the ranch and have a lunch. The one thing I regret is he didn't go fishing with me yesterday afternoon. He, he wanted a little rest. And uh, but but I, I, I love having him here. I can't tell you what a comfort it is to talk to him on the phone. Uh, he's he's steady. You know, times get tough when you make when you make tough decisions, and uh, we both made a tough decision. But there was never any uh, doubt in his mind. He was uh, steady under fire. He stood his ground when he needed to stood his ground because he 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 understands the difference between right and wrong, and he knows the difference between slavery and freedom. And I'm I'm honored to call him friend, and um, and uh, really glad he's here. He's part of the world. By the way. They tell me Australia and Texas uh, got a lot in common. Having watched this man perform, I agree. <laughs> Biggest compliment you can pay to somebody, at least in this part of the world, is you're kind of like a Texan.
<laughs> Thanks, mate. Thank you. Barney, come on. Quit showing off. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. They are very good. Yeah. Yeah. You're a hit, son. Good one, mate. Good one. 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 Why don't you and the ambassador hop in with us and then <laughs> then the girls can go with uh, Laura? I hope you're not just focusing only on Barney. <laughs> you all going with yeah, Michael and Thomas. Yeah, okay. Come on, buddy. Oh! We'll hear more from President Bush right now on his meeting with the Australian Prime Minister. In his weekly radio address, he talked about Australia's cooperation in the war against terrorism. Following that, independent senator from Vermont, Jim Jeffords, picked by the Democrats to deliver their weekly address. He